Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Today I am bringing you both an arena and solo shuffle guide in one video. I think I can fit it all into one video. You're going to learn everything from stats, tier, talents, rotation, everything you're going to need to know to be successful as a misweaver in arena and solo shuffle. With that said, let's jump right into the video. This is probably the worst looking character I've ever seen. Dear Lord. So I'm going to start with Horde. As far as Horde races go, there have been some pretty big nerfs to them. Uh, recently, the orc got nerfed by a good amount, and Undead now shares cooldown with Trinket. It was bugged before. It didn't share the Will of the Forsaken with your Trinket, so you could basically essentially have two Trinkets, uh, one for Fear, one for Normal CC. They've patched that over. So on the Horde side, I actually think you're very limited as far as options go, and I don't even think they're that good compared to the alliance uh your first option is gonna be orc i think orc is gonna be your best race as far as you know the stun reduction even though it was nerfed it's still decent also the blood fury the stats you get from that is also good too so i think orc is gonna be the best word race second is probably gonna be undead again you it does share a cooldown with trinket but will of the forsaken is pretty decent if you use it first before you use trinket so if you use it on like a warrior fear warlock fear sleepwalk something like that put your trinket on a 30 second cooldown it's still it's decent, so I would go Undead next. And then third, if you're just looking for a third option, Panda is decently good. The Quaking Palm and the extra verse you get from the Panda food is actually okay. <laughs> so I would go Orc, Undead, Panda as far as Horde races go. As far as Alliance goes, I think you have a lot more options. There's a lot more variety in what you can play. The best race, hands down, whether it's Solo Shuffle or Arena, I believe is Night Elf. Night Elf is the best. You do get Shadow Meld, so that allows you to drop combat and drink if you're in normal Arena. If you're in Shuffle, it allows you to basically just stop a cast that's on you. So if you see a Mage casting Polymorph, if you see a Stormbolt mid-air, because there is an animation on the spell, you can actually shadow meld it. You know, same thing with chaos bolts, stuff like that. You can meld it and completely un uh, immune it, uh, which is really, really good. It allows you to basically just get out of CC. You get a jail, get out of jail free card. One small thing about it too is it drops the focus target. So some players use focus macros to CC or interrupt. If you shadow meld it, actually gets you know drops that focus frame. One little small thing, but night elf I think is absolutely the best race. If you don't want to go night elf, perfectly fine. Gnome is really good. Boomy is still a pretty good option. I'm seeing a lot of Boomy demo hunter as well as well as boomy demo lock and they always have that root beam well escape artist allows you to get out of roots and it's really good so you know gnome is a good option you also can do the same with dwarf and dark iron dwarf but their cooldowns are on a two minute cooldown whereas the gnome ratio is on a one minute cooldown so you can get out of every root beam with gnome but dark iron dwarf and dwarf gets rid of curses on you so you know annoying curses from warlocks monks don't have a curse to spell so this gets you you know one to spell on those curses and then you also i believe the dwarf makes it so you take less physical damage and then the dark iron dwarf gives you stats for every single debuff that you dispel with it i would mostly lean towards dark iron dwarf just because those stats are nice and we have a relatively easy time getting away from melee so i don't think the melee damage reduction is that necessary so dark iron dwarf i think is, would be better than dwarf and if you don't want to go any of those four races human gives a decent amount of stats you get haste crit verse and mastery so i think it's three percent on every stat I'm pretty sure two or three percent. You also get will to survive from human, which gets you have stuns. But again, that shares a cooldown with trinket, so it's not the best. It's similar to undead, where it's decent, but it's not the greatest. But you do get some two, you do get some good secondary stats. If your main priority is arena night elf, because you need to night elf drink, because you can drop combat drink immediately. You don't need to wait like. You don't even know how many seconds to get out of combat and start drinking. If you're going to play Solo Shuffle, I think Night Elf is good. I think Gnome is maybe a better option. You're going to see a lot of boomies. Um, you can also deal with, you know, Mage Roots and all that. So Gnome, Night Elf, Dark Iron Dwarf, probably going to be the top picks if you're playing Alliance. All right, so now that you have leveled your Mist Weaver and you want to start gearing, your stats are going to be Versatility, Mastery, Haste, Crit for both Arena and Solo Shuffle. Previously, I, tr I played Haste Verse. I thought it was pretty good. But with damage being so high, I think you need the extra healing from the mastery to really help keep your team alive. As far as embellishments go, they don't really change from season to season or patch to patch. The number one thing you want to be using is precog. So this makes it so when you juke a kick, you are immune to CC interrupts pushbacks for four seconds. So this gives you four seconds of breathing room. Thank God Ms. Cast and Ms. Weaver needs it. And then the second embellishment, I like to go blue silk and lining, which makes it so when you are above 90% health, you get... 
a 624 mastery, which is fantastic because we want mastery. You could also go the versatility embellishment. I believe it's called Verdant Tether, and Verdant Tether makes it so your healing spells have a chance to give versatility to your teammates. The only issue I have with that is that it gives it more verse to your teammates the closer you are, and a lot of the time you aren't really close to your teammates. Normally, you're like you want to be pretty far from your teammates. Like this is where you want your teammate to be over here. Um, so you're going to give them less verse. And then the second is that most players are at versatility cap. So as soon as you get to 30% versatility, you start to get less verse for each point. You get, I think it's like 10% less verse um, if after you 30%. So most players are playing around 30% first. So I just don't think you get a lot of value out of the that embellishment. So I've been playing Precog and Blue Circle Lining. I recommend playing both of those. I think they are fantastic embellishments for Cast and Mistweaver. Next, we have the Mistweaver tier set. 100% you want to play our two sets. So what it does is whenever you use Renewing Mist on somebody, they take increased healing from your spells. It is heavily nerfed in PvP. I believe it is 15% in PvP. Uh, not 50, sadly. I, w I wish it was. But yeah, it's only 15% healing. But it's still 15% from all your healing. So that's why you want to keep your Renewing Mist out. And I'll explain in the rotation. Uh going over that as far as a four set goes it's cut in half in pvp it makes it so 10 percent of all your healing you do to whoever has that renewing mist buff is stored and then dispersed evenly among your allies with renewing mist uh with, when chi harmony fades or is refreshed i personally do not play four set i know a lot of mist weavers do and i think it is fine the only problem i have with the four set is that the stats on the gloves and the legs and the helm are absolutely terrible um it, going over our stats crit is the last stat that mist weavers want so i the, the helm has crit verse the gloves have crit verse the legs have crit mastery so i just think you're kind of losing a lot of stats now again a lot of mist weavers play four set so if you want to play like the other mist weavers that is perfectly fine i would recommend playing four set it does roughly maybe two to four percent of your healing that's really good i just don't like i like being able to stack versus mastery so i just go if you're just going to run two set i would go shoulders and chest and then I run Verse Mastery Helm and Verse Mastery Gloves, as well as Haste Verse on the legs. Overall, if you want to take a look at what my gear looks like, I can go through it. My Helm is the Conquest Verse Mastery Helm. My neck is the Verse Mastery Crafted Neck, Torque of Pastime. Shoulders and chest are both the tier pieces. My cloak is Verse Mastery from the vendor. I actually think I kind of want the 489 cloak, but this still Verse Mastery. I think this is more Mastery, so I kind of like it. Wrists are Verse Master as well, which is also from the Bloody Token Vendor. My gloves are Verse Mastery Conquest. My belt is actually from PvE. It is Verse Mastery, but I think you get Verse Mastery belt from the the um, Bloody Token Vendor. This just it just had a socket in my vault, and it was 49 M level, so it's insane. My legs are Haste Verse. Again, I try to get to about 26% haste. I really like uh, having a good amount of haste. My gloves are Haste Verse as well with Precog on them. And then I have a ring with Haste Mastery just because, you know, 29% Verse is good enough. So why not get more Haste and Mastery? And then I have a ring that's Haste Verse as well. I have my two trinkets. You know, you want the Verdant Gladius Medallion to get you out of CC. And then my second trinket is the Insignia for the extra Haste. My weapon I swap between depending on how I feel. If I'm doing threes, I will normally play my Verse Mastery Staff. If I'm playing twos or solo shuffle, I'll actually swap to a PvE weapon. This is from the Galacron's Fall. And what it does is when someone is below 35% health, you can blast them for... In PvP, it does about 115k damage, which isn't terrible. Now, I want to talk about talents. On the left-hand side are the Monk talents. And there really aren't too many flex talents here. I'll go over what I can. The big ones, you get Tiger's Lust, which is great for removing any slows or roots on somebody. It also gives them 70% movement speed. You get your in cap, you get kick, you get forper, which is one of your main defensives. Over on the left side here, you get a shorter cooldown on leg sweep, as well as increasing the range of it, which is fantastic. And then you also get the vivify doing more healing, and you get the instant vivify. So this is vivacious vivification. This is what the weak or glowing around vivify does. It's just an instant vivify, which is great. You get your port, Ring of Peace, which is one of my favorite spells. You could just rob people, and it's amazing. Chi Wave is okay if you're playing with melee or demo lock, because a lot of the pets do melee damage. Uh, this will put Mystic Touch up, which I will explain uh, during the rotation. And then you get Profound Rebuttal, which is just helping your healing with Expel Harm. And then you make your way down, and then you have your Jade Serpent Statue. So on the left-hand side, there aren't many flex points. It, theoretically, if you think you're not going to get targeted... 
you could drop Grace of the Crane, but the extra 8% healing is really, really nice. Um, if you wanted to move those two points, you want to do more damage, you can put it into Rising Sun Kick damage, which is fast feet. Mistweavers, we are notorious for not having any damage, which is too bad. But if you want to be able to totem stomp against Shaman, or if you feel like you'll be able to, if you think a team's going to be on top of you, you know, it's a small map, maybe you could play fast feet, which is perfectly fine. But for the most part, Grace the Crane, you could also put one into hasty provocation, which makes it so provoke targets move at you 50% faster, which is actually pretty good because you want to taunt CC. Again, that'll be in the tips part of the video uh, towards the end. I will go over some tips for playing Miss Weaver. But that is that is the pretty much the left side of the tree. Nothing too crazy. On the right hand side are the Mistweaver talents. This is where things get a little bit interesting. I'll go over some important talents that you're gonna want to pay attention to because when we talk about our rotation, I don't want you to be lost when talking about something. So enveloping mist is at the top of the tree. This is your probably your second primary hot. You you have two hots and well technically you have three, but this is the one you're going to be using a good amount of time. It does cost a lot of mana, 12,000 mana for one. So this is really important. What it does is it's a hot with your Thunder Focus. It also gives an initial heal, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but it also makes it so your target with Envelope Mist increases healing from your other spells by 40%, which is massive. And then if you reply Renewing Mist, it will also, reply a, it'll also apply a Renewing Mist with the... Uh, rapid diffusion talent so this makes it so whenever you rising sun kick or enveloping mist it'll apply renewing mist and just to point out this talent does work with your two sets so if you see how i put renewing mist out and it puts a chi harmony out if i use enveloping mist uh there should be a renewing mist right here with a chi harmony so that's a different target than this one over here which is amazing so you do save a little bit of mana and a few globals that way you go down the left hand tree and you get, you know, you get your life cocoon, which is your, you know, your big bubble. Uh, more, most importantly, you get your common coalescence. So what this does is this makes it so soothing mist. Whenever soothing mist heals, you increase the absorption shield of your life cocoon by 2%, stacking up to 50%, which is fantastic. As well as Mist of Life. So whenever you use Life Cocoon, it applies your new Mist and Velvet Mist. And then you want to get Chrysalis, which reduces the cooldown of Life Cocoon by 45 seconds. Mist Weavers, not known for the you know cooldowns we have. we have we have about two so whenever you can get that cooldown reduction on life cocoon you want to go for it uh in the middle of the tree you have your healing elixirs which they auto proc now i don't know if anyone's seen that change but in 10.2 your life cocoon or sorry your healing elixirs get auto proc they're no longer a button you press at 40 percent health they heal you for 20 percent of your max health so you regenerate one every 30 seconds stacking up to two times so you just don't have to think about it it's i don't like the change but it, they're committing to it so it is what it is it's a nice heal at 40 percent um it is affected by damping so do remember that you have overflowing mist which makes it so your enveloping mist heals a target for two percent of their max health each time they take damage very strong talent especially versus pet classes every time somebody takes damage they're getting healed and it's really really good you get your yulon you get your celestial breath to make your yulon even better mist trap buffs your enveloping mist duration and the healing so it just makes it so Velvet Mist does even more healing. And then down here, you are just the bread and butter is going to be your cloud of focus. So this makes it so whenever you use Velvet Mist or Vivify while you're chilling Soothing Mist, it increases their healing by 15% and reduces their mana cost by 15%, stacking up to two times. This was just recently nerfed in 10.2. Sadly, it is it was not a good nerf. Mist Weavers have been hurting for mana and healing. So it, it only stacks up to two times now instead of three. And also gives less mana reduction and less healing. So, very unfortunate, but that's still the this is the sh this is the whole bread and butter of the cast and mist rotation. This just gives you short Yulon. Resplendent Mist makes it so your Gust of Mist has a thirty percent chance to do one hundred percent more healing. I'll explain our mastery after this, but our mastery is just basically an extra heal every time you use Vivify and Velvet Mist or Renewing Mist or Expel Harm, so that's amazing. And we come down here to Serenity makes it so Thunder Focus T empowers two additional spells. And Thunder Focus T is one of the most important spells in our toolkit. I will go over it in hugely in depth uh, during our rotation, but you're going to want to use your Thunder Focus T as efficient as possible. And then the final most important part about this right-hand tree is Peaceful Mending. So whenever you... You're soothing misting a target. They receive 50% more healing from your velvet mist and renewing mist effects. So if I have a renewing mist on myself, it's going to be doing a certain amount. If I put renewing mist on my teammate and I start soothing mist them, that renewing mist is going to be doing much more healing than what my my um, renewing mist will be doing. 
I also don't want to forget Manatee. So what Manatee does is for every 25,000 mana you spend, you gain one stack of Manatee, and you actually get a chance to generate one based on your critical strike chance to generate an extra stack. Whenever you consume one stack of this Manatee, you get 3,600 mana back, and then for every stack, you get your spells cost 30% less mana for that many seconds. So if you consume five stacks of Manatee, you get five seconds of 30% mana reduction on your spells, which is just amazing. So I what I have five stacks of Manatee right now. If I consume them, I get five stacks, I get five seconds of Manatee, which you really cannot waste this Manatee. Any point during an arena, if you don't heal efficiently, you're gonna run out of mana. So just keep that in mind. Don't want to waste it. Always try to make sure you're not going to get kicked when you have your mana tee up. And that's pretty much a treat. Oh, one last thing I want to note is Invigorating Mists because I feel like it doesn't get a lot of value and I feel like people kind of unutilize it. But whenever Vivify heals a target, anybody that has Renewing Mist on them also gets healed by it. So what that means is if I have Renewing Mist on this guy right here and I have Renewing Mist over here and I heal this guy right here, everyone's getting healed from Vivify which is fantastic. So I just another reason to keep Renewing Mist out on as many people as possible. You have your two set, you have your Vivify healing, you have Invigorating Mists. It is very, very, very important. All right, next we have PvP Talents. Mist Weavers actually have a good amount of PvP Talents. So I'm going to go over the top, I think, five talents that you're going to want to go with and then give you some scenarios of what you're going to want to play into what. So first of all, Peace Weaver you're you're never you're pretty much never swapping out a peace weaver so what this does is restore those cooldown or is reduced by 50 percent and provides immunity to magical damage and harmful effects for two seconds so restoral it makes it so when you are so when you're stunned this is one of our main cooldowns you can heal everybody and it clears them of harmful poisons and diseases and this interacts with peace weaver so when that, if you're stunned you can still use this and everyone gets the buff and they are immune to CC. Anything ma anything magical. Damage, CC, it doesn't matter. So you're never really swapping out of this. It's too useful versus too many. Pretty much everything has magic damage or CC. So, for example, Hammer of Justice from Red Pallies. You could use Restoral to immune a trap, to immune a cyclone, to immune a blinding light or repentance follow-up. So anything like that, you can do it to immune damage from like a Destro lock or Demo lock or whatever they're playing with. So... Again, keep that in mind. Peace Weaver, immune to all magical damage. CC, anything magical for two seconds. Time it right, and you'll get a really large heal, and then you'll also be able to immune any CC on yourself and your teammates, which is amazing. The next up is Zen Spheres. So I was a little weird about Zen Spheres. I like them. The issue I had was that at first it cost no mana, and now it costs like 1,200 mana, which adds up over the course of the arena. And then they also cost the GCD, so it's just like, I feel like sometimes it's awkward. I feel like Mistweavers are so, like, if you're not pressing a button every global, you're going to lose. And Zen Spheres kind of adds to that, but I talked to some other Mistweavers, and they highly recommend playing Zen Spheres. I've been playing it since, and it's helped tremendously. So what Zen Spheres does is you have two different spheres that you can put on people. You can only put one up, one of each up at a time. So you have Sphere of Hope, which increases your healing done to the target by 15%, flat out. And the good thing about Sphere of Hope is I don't actually see many teams trying to purge it. It is purgeable, so keep that in mind. But I put Zen Spheres um, on myself or my teammate right here. So Sphere of Hope, receiving 15% additional healing from the Monk. This stacks as well. Remember when I talked about Enveloping Mist? Whenever you have Envelop Mist on somebody, they take 40% more healing from your other spells. And then you also have your four set <laughs> that makes it so they take 15% more healing from you. So you have 15%, 15%, 40% from your other spells besides Envelop Mist. So it's just, it's just crazy. You just have so many things that add up for your healing. And then you also have Sphere of Despair. So targets deal 10% less damage to you and take 10% increased damage from all sources. So that includes your teammates. Now, one small trick that you can do it's not really a trick it's just something to keep in mind is if you're being tunneled right let's just, i did this i actually did this the other day if you're playing like twos and you're playing it's a wrestle shaman arms warrior and the arm shirt arm shop the, the arms warrior is running you down put zen sphere on them they do 10 percent less damage to you just by you keeping it up and the shaman can only dispel once every eight seconds so i'm not saying just sit here and spam zen spheres but if you're kiting you know, the warrior well, and you're playing far away, and they connect to you, put a Zen Sphere up, right? They're doing 10% less damage to you, and then start healing. Because that 10% less damage can add up over the course of an arena, help you with mana, help you stay alive. So these two talents are 
99% of my games, you're playing these two talents. Uh, it's the third one that really changes depending on what you're queuing into. Um, so the first one is Eminence. What Eminence does is this makes it so you could use port while stunned. And then the cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds if you are if you don't port while stunned. And I'll show you a little trick with that as well. So you could port while stunned, which is amazing. Um, use it to avoid CC. So if you're playing against RMP, where, you know, obviously Rogue Mage, they cheap shot into poly. Or if you're playing, the, you know, RMD, you know, cheap shot into Cyclone. You can immune or not immune. You can avoid the cyclone or the polymorph, which is fantastic. Um, it's really good for being able to get away from people if they're trying to target you. Just because being able to pull raw stun is amazing. Because they the melee have a choice. They can either use the mobility to get to you, or waste it because you could pour it a second time with escape from reality right here, and then they can't get to you. So they'll just probably most of the time they'll swap off you if you're playing eminence. Um, so keep that in mind. Use it when, you know, versus RMD, Cupid, where they have the Hodge trap or Intimidation Stun trap, stuff like that, where Holy Pallies are also really good because what they'll do is they'll try to Hodge you into Blinding Light or Hodge you into Repentance. You can just, if you time Eminence right, you'll be able to avoid CC, which is amazing. That's the beauty of Mistweaver. The next one, Counter to Magic, which I feel like is super underrated, but I think it's freaking amazing i don't know why more people don't play it i love it so what this does is whenever you dispel a a dot a magical dot from somebody they take 10 percent more healing stacking up to three times so if someone dots me and there's three dots on me and i dispel that's 30 percent increased healing and there's also a bug i don't know i don't know if blizzard doesn't know about it but if you diffuse magic with like five dots on you you actually get like you can you can get up to like six stacks of counteract magic which i don't think blizzard knows about <laughs> but it's a really really good talent i play it versus shadow priest and balance druids oh and ellie shaman those are the three because those are you obviously you want to dispel those dots so if i'm going to dispel i might as well also get increased healing for it so also one little tip instead of playing restore play revival the difference is that revival you can't use while stunned but this will dispel magical debuff so if you're playing it's boomies Ellie Shaman Shadow Priests, and you, I would play normal revival and then play counteract magic. The normal revival will dispel those magic dots, and then everyone gets like 30% extra healing for like, I don't know, what, 10 seconds? It's it's fantastic. It's amazing. I love it. So, counteract magic, super underrated, not used too often. I love it though. Really, really good talent. Um, don't be missed. I, I want to love it, but it just doesn't get enough value. Maybe if you're playing twos and you queue into, you know, Mage Shadow Priest. Mage Priest, it's just not good enough. Now your healing sphere is just so sad. Zen Focus T, so this makes it so you are immune to silence and interrupts for five seconds. Again, a very, very good talent against casters or you know or hunters with range kicks, right? So mages, shadow priest boom, you have silences. But so if you could time it right, you can gamble and try to get it. But sometimes they will they'll try to just they'll normally cover you, they'll normally stun you into like a silence or like stun you into rubeam. So um not really too useful for that. But again, versus the mages, versus any you know, hunters is pretty good. So anything with the you know, a range kick, then for you know, shaman, they got that short cooldown, it's really annoying. So Zen Focus T really, really good as well. And then grapple weapon, I think is the last one I want to yeah, grapple weapon is the last one I want to talk about. So this makes it so you have a disarm, you have a range disarm. And this doesn't work the way melee disarms work, by the way. So for example, warriors have parry. And what parry does is if they press parry and a like a rogue tries to disarm them or another warrior tries to disarm them, it'll immune it because they're immune to melee, melee abilities. However, grapple weapon is a ranged disarm. So you could disarm warrior parry, in case you didn't know that. So grapple weapon, 45 seconds, and has a 30-yard range. I normally play this versus marks hunters, versus warriors, you know, any any melee, you know, enhanced shaman, any melee that relies on their, their weapon. Subtlety rogues, assassination rogues, outlaw rogues, you know, disarm outlaw rogues when you see adrenaline rush, disarm subtlety rogues when you see shadow blades, disarm acid rogues pretty much whenever you see a kinney shot. I don't know. I Versus acid rogues, I just kind of dis disarm them essentially off cooldown um, whenever I see a kidney shot. So, yeah, those are pretty much your basic PvP talents. Um... Again, Peace Weaver, just so much value. Zen Spheres get good value. If you're going to drop one, you can drop Zen Spheres, for example, for Eminence. If you think teams are going to go you, or if you think you're going to need Eminence. Let's just let's just say, for example, you're playing against Rogue 
lock pally for example right peace weaver essentially mandatory versus any caster even if they're not casters ret even versus rets and dks they're all magic damage these days um and then you want disarm for the rogue right and then it's going to come down to you know eminence or zen focus c or sorry eminence or zen spheres or you can play zen focus c if you don't if you don't think they're going to go you can play zen focus t but I would definitely play Eminence to avoid CC and stuff like that. RMD or RMP, this is also pretty good um, to go with. If you don't want to disarm the rogue, you could play, you know, you could play Zen Spheres. You know, if you're playing with a warrior or something and they have disarm, you could do that too. But something like this could work. I just like I just like having control over the disarms. So those are pretty much it for PvP talents. It's trying to just find a good combination of those fives, those five talents, and just trying to focus on what you're queuing into, how you're going to counter their goes, and how to keep your team alive. Before I talk about rotation, I want to quickly talk about Mistweaver Mastery because I want people to understand that before we talk about it. So our Mastery is Gust of Mist, and what it does is whenever you're renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, Expel Harm, Restoral, or Vivify, so pretty much whenever you use your healing spells, that's going to also have a second heal with it. And what it's going to do is the primary targets, my mastery is what, 140%. It's going to heal for 30K. And then you're also taking Resplendent Mist here. So what that means is there's a 30% chance that your Gust of Mist is going to do 100% more healing. So 30% chance for my heal to do 100K just flat out. And that that's everything, right? So that's that's any heal. And the reason why that's important is because instant healing is not something Mistweavers really have because our all of our healing rotation basically comes from soothing mist but if there's kicks available your renewing mist can proc that heal and your renewing mist is instant so there's a chance that your renewing mist just does 100k and you have two charges of it and same with your instant vivify from a vicious vivacious vivification so this every 10 seconds your next vivify becomes instant you press this there's a chance it just does 100k healing right I mean, at minimum, it's going to do Vivify healing and then, what, like 30k healing. So it's not terrible. But just keep that in mind. That's really, really important, especially if you have other Renewing Mists out and you're getting that Cleave heal from the Invigorating Mists. It all just comes together. All right, let's talk about the basic healing rotation. I feel like I've already talked about pretty much the basic healing rotation. But the first thing you want to do is you want to put Zen Spheres on your teammate. You know, you could you could put it on the enemy too, but the, let's just with some of the basics here. Let's put Zen Sphere on our teammate. They get fifteen percent more healing from you. The next thing you're gonna want to do is you want to put your renewing mist. And again, there's a lot of reasons you want to do that. It's gonna do. It's gonna put your two set on them, so they're taking fifteen percent more healing. You're also gonna get good value when you vivify from your invigorating mists. So you wanna you wanna do that. And then then the, you're probably gonna soothing mist. So soothing mist is your main. This is without. Soothing Mist, you can't, none of your heals are instant. It, I'm going to say instant, but they're not really instant. Um, like, for example, if you just press Enveloping Mist, it has a cast time, right? And so does your Vivify. But when you use your Soothing Mist, it's they're instant. So, and then you get stacks of Cloud of Focus. So, always keep your Renewing Mist out. Always put it on at minimum your main target, but you have two charges of Renewing Mist. So, you want to put it out on as many people as possible. You always want Renewing Mist to be recharging. And then from there, you're just going to Soothing Mist Vivify. And, with, and then you get stacks of Cloud of Focus. Increase the healing of your, of your Enveloping Mist and Vivify, and then also reduce their mana cost. And that's the basic of the healing rotation. The next layer of your rotation is your Thunder Focus T. So Thunder Focus T actually empowers four spells, two from your Focus Thunder Talent, so you can have the choice over what spells you use. And then you also have T of Serenity, which is two random empower spells, which are Renewing Mist, Envelop Mist, or Vivify. And there can be duplicates, so it can empower two Vivifies. And what it means to empower your spells is pretty much this. You're going to use it on Enveloping Mist or Vivify 99% of the time. That's what you're going to do. So Enveloping Mist... If you use Thunder Focus T and Velvet Mist, it'll immediately heal for 78,000 and it's instant cast. And then with Vivify, it'll cost no mana. The only other one I find myself using is Expel Harm, which is just new this patch, by the way. And it makes it so transfers 25 additional healing into damage and increase a Chica Kun for 182,000 damage, which is amazing. Um, but 99% of the time, you're using on either Velvet Mist or Vivify. And I'll show you why that's important. The first example is making Enveloping Mist instant and have an initial heal. So without Thunder Focus T, Enveloping Mist has no initial heal. It, it's just a hot. It's just a normal hot, you know, like Druid, you know, have Life Bloom and all that. But if you use Thunder Focus T with Enveloping Mist, so you see right now, it's just a hot. If I use Thunder Focus T Enveloping Mist, it's instant and then also has 
a, a big heal at the start and then also a hot. The reason you the reason you'd want to do this is one, if your teammate is really low, and two, if there's kicks available. So there are times now. It's, I want to preface this by saying using Thunder Focus Team Enveloping Mist is very very mana inefficient, and it's not something you want to do too often unless you're pairing it with something like Manatee, which I will talk about. But for the most part, even with Manatee, you really don't want to use that Thunder Focus Team Enveloping Mist too often. But there's gonna be times where you're gonna want to. So I thought I'd, I'd tell you. The main way you're going to want to use Thunder Focus T is with Vivify. So it makes Vivify cost no mana, which is amazing. Because if you remember, Cloud of Focus stacks twice. And for each stack, it increases the healing of your Vivify and Envelopment Mist. And also reduces the mana cost. So put your Zen Sphere up. Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T. You could use Thunder Focus T while channeling Soothing Mist. And you Vivify, Vivify. You just got two stacks of Cloud of Focus for free. And then you follow it up with Envelopment Mist. And that's the beauty. That's that's how everything weaves together. And then you can see I got a, a um, T of Serenity for Renewing Mist. So you're just going to want to put Renewing Mist out. That'll just ex extend the duration of Renewing Mist. I don't think it... It doesn't extend the duration of Tree Harmony, which is too bad. Because I think that would actually be overpowered as heck. But I think that would be insane. So yeah, that's pretty much the two main ways you're going to be using Thunder Focus T. Manatee. I explained earlier what it does is every 25,000 mana you get a stack you also get a chance depending on your crit we don't really stack crit in pvp to get another stack of manatee for every stack you consume you get a one second buff that reduces the mana cost of all your spells by 30 percent and this stacks with cloud of focus so 30 percent mana reduction and then you have mana reduction from cloud of focus from two stacks so Right now, my envelopment mist costs 12,000 mana. Pretty much the name of the game, little mini game that you're trying to do is to make as enveloping mist cost as little mana as possible because it's your best heal by far. It's going to be your number one heal by far. So what you're going to do, Zen Sphere up. We're going to try to incorporate manatee now. Uh, we're going to take a few stacks at a time. We're going to use our Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus, T, Vivify, Vivify into an enveloping mist. And our enveloping mist costs 5,800 mana. So... From 12,000 down to 5,800, over 50% mana reduction on your Velvet Mist just by doing rotation correctly. One little small trick with Manatee as well is I try to I try to consume between four to five stacks of Manatee um, at a time, depending on obviously how much damage is going out. But you kind of need to be able to predict the future if on Mistweaver because you don't want to be caught trying to consume Manatee while the other team is like using combustion, like using their big cooldowns. So try to use it when like try to predict when the damage is incoming but just do your best pretty much it's not easy to do you know and it, it's just some mana is better than nothing right so again what you're going to want to do is you're going to consume your manatee you got your zen spheres up you're going to soothing mist thunder focus see vivify vivify into an envelope mist and boom you have 5800 mana on your envelope mist which is fantastic The last thing you want to incorporate into your healing rotation is Yulon. So what Invoke Yulon does is you summon her and she will heal other people for a little bit of amount. But the most important thing is she will put a hot on somebody after you envelop miss them and then make it makes it so your enveloping miss costs 50% less mana, which is crazy. And that stacks with your other mana reductions, which is crazy. That's crazy good. Um, she also puts a Chi uh, Cocoon out on people. So right here in Celestial Harmony at the bottom, when activated, Yulon and Chi-Gi um, will apply Chi Cocoon to five targets, absorbing 182,000 damage, which is great. It makes it global a lot easier. I just wish she was off the GCD, but the little Chi Cocoons aren't bad. I'm not mad about it. Um, so again, when, while she's active, your Envelopment Mist costs 50% less damage. Sorry, costs 50% less mana. What you'll try to do with Yulon is you're going to try to get your Manatee stacks out. Yulon, get your two set out, and then just start going to town. So keep your Zen Sphere up. You're going to Manatee, Renewing Mist, Yulon, Soothing Mist, Thunder Focus T, Vivify, Vivify. And your Enveloping Mist costs 2,940 mana, which is just crazy. All of that just because you get your Cloud of Focus tax for free using your Thunder Focus T, Vivifies. And then your Yulon makes your Enveloping Mist cost 50% less mana. All that healing cost what three percent mana um try to consume between five to six stacks of manatee before and you should be fine
All right, so let's put the entire rotation together. You want to make sure you put Zen Sphere on your teammate. You want to make sure you get your renewing mist out. Make sure you put your statue down as well. During an arena game, there is going to be times where you need to move statue. Just have it on a you know a key mind that you could hit you know fairly frequently. Sometimes teams, especially in shuffle, to try to go up and down. Just do your best to make sure you're always in line of it. Get your Zen Sphere out. Get your renewing mist out. And then from here, let's just assume there's going to be incoming damage. What I'll do is I'll mana T. Yulon is my first cooldown. Soothing mist, thunder focus T. Vivify, vivify. Get those cloud focus acts into an enveloping mist again it costs so little mana and you get so much healing out with you know a one minute cooldown which is just amazing and don't forget you need to get that enveloping mist out to make sure to get that extra hot from yulon it's just an extra hot that makes it so they take more healing from you which is again amazing it's so much healing that you can do and yeah just don't try not to waste manatee stacks always make sure you're generating cloud of focus cloud of focus stacks always make sure your renewing mist charges are rolling because you're losing out not only on you know renewing mist healing and the cleave healing from your vivify but you're also going to be losing out on your two set which is just it super super important next i want to talk about instant healing which again you don't really see <laughs> you know in the same sentence as miss weaver because again we we need our cloud of focus healing from our soothing mist it's very important but i just want to tell everyone about what you can do if you need instant healing if there's interrupts available so this is completely if interrupts are available if teams are targeting you and let's just say you know you've used your mobility right you're out of mobility your team is doing a great job healing for you but obviously you need to keep healing even though that you're getting peeled there's some things you can do to keep yourself alive so again Put Zen Sphere on yourself. More importantly, put Zen Sphere on one of the people that are hitting you. That way they do 10% less damage to you. From here, you could use your Renewing Mist to get the Renewing Mist healing as well as the Mastery healing. And then you get a chance for a, you know, 100k heal from your Mastery or more for crits. And from there, you have Yulon, which again, if you pair Yulon with like a Thunder Focus T, you know, Manatee and Belping Mist, still does a ton of healing. It doesn't do as much healing as if you have Cloud Focus stacks, but healing is healing. And then you also have Expel Harm which gives you a chi cocoon, you know, 212k cocoon, uh, chi cocoon, probably affect, it's also affected by save them all, right? Because save them all is our talent here that makes us do more healing. And it, I just heal the PvP army. So I think on average, it's about 180k shield, which is really good. So you get a heal from your expel harm and 120k, 180k shield. And then you also have to instant vivify from vivacious vivification every 10 seconds. So, and that cool, that always keeps rolling. So you could have theoretically like two instant vivifies, uh, pretty close to back to back. I don't have the internal timer. Um, I, it probably could be good to have the weak aura for it. I think there's a weak aura out there. I don't really use it, but could be good. Could be useful to have that. And then let's just say your teammate is dying and you need some instant healing out. As usual, put exp put Zen Sphere on your teammate. And you could use your Redoing Mist, get the two set going. If you don't have Yulon, just, you know, Thunder Focus, you know, Manatee, Thunder Focus Team, Velping Mist, super good. Get your Redoing Mist out. And then you want to instant Vivify and then just try to weave in a Vivify. This is why I like having Haste, by the way. It's just a lot easier to juke if you have to. Like, if there's multiple kicks available, you know, you can kind of fake a little bit. You can even get away with one. You know, you could cheese it a little bit because towards the end of your cast, you can, you know, at the end of the global, you can weave in like a Vivify. And then you just, you know, if you try to get Thunder Focus T back, let's just say you have Yulon now. Um, usually if I have Thunder Focus T and Yulon coming back, I'll save my Yulon or my Enveloping Mist, my Thunder Focus T and Enveloping Mist for it. That way I always have that guaranteed hop from the Enveloping Breath that makes it so, you know, they take 10% more healing from me, which is uh, amazing. So that's instant healing from Miss Weaver. You know, trying to weave in, you know, your instant vivifies with your... Um, is it with your doing mists for, uh, and getting value from your mastery? Really hoping that you get decent procs from your resplendent mist because that's kind of where most of your healing comes from. And then obviously you want to get enveloped mist out when you have all that mana reduction. That way you're not running out of mana super fast in arena games or shuffles. Next up, we have cooldowns. And I kind of want to talk about our healing cooldowns and I'll talk separately about our defensive cooldowns. But as far as healing cooldowns for our teammates, we have we have, we have a little, you know, we, we, we have some, about one or two. The main one that you're going to see people use is Life Cocoon. This is your primary cooldown for your teammates. This is affected 
by dampening, but it makes it a little bit easier. You know, it's a bigger life cocoon when you have common coalescence. So I should have about 50 stacks. I do have 50 stacks. Uh, my life cocoon should be absolutely insane right now. I'm not going to lie. So I think this has absorbing 914,000. It should be more than that. 1.8 million damage is what my life cocoon absorbs with 50 stacks of common coalescence. So very, very powerful cooldown. It is affected by dampening, but it's still your main cooldown. So it's very important to not waste this cooldown. In solo shuffle, I will normally throw out my first life cocoon because in my mind, essentially, rounds go about three to three and a half minutes. You have two life cocoons around. The first one, whenever you see people, if my teammate isn't pressing defensive cooldown, let's just say, for example, you're queuing into Red Pally Demon Hunter and you see like wings and you see meta come out and your warrior isn't parrying, just send the life cocoon. Just, just send the life cocoon. You're going to save mana. It's going to help you stay um, alive, st keep your teammates ahead. So very, very important. Keep that in mind. Life cocoon is a very powerful cooldown. You know, a minute, what, minute 20 cooldown? Minute 20 um, cooldown on it. So it, it's not terrible. But, you know, you don't want to waste it because that's kind of all we have. And then the, I, you know, I talked about Yulon. This is a healing cooldown obviously it's it's an active cooldown but you don't get value out of it if you get cc'd on it right so if you press yulon and then all of a sudden you're trapped and then you're like stunned off you get no mana reduction you get you know no healing bonus you get nothing so you want to get value out of your yulon try not to waste her it is a one minute cooldown but she it's very important it's it's mostly that mana reduction that's really really crucial for keeping you know yourself not running out from running out of mana the next cooldown is Re Restoro, which I talked about. So this one, I play Restoro 99% of the time because you can use it while stunned and you have talents like Eminence where, you know, you could port while stunned. So, you know, you have a lot of things you could use while you're stunned, which is great. Immune damage, immune CC with the Restoro. It doesn't work with Peace Weaver. Um, I do use Normal Revival that can't be used while stunned versus Affliction Warlocks, Shadow Priest, Ellie Shaman, Boomies. Anything with dots, really, really uh, important. And then that's kind of it for your teammates. That's kind of Miss Weaver's lack in the defensive department when it comes to having team having cooldowns for their teammates. Um, but those are the main ones you're gonna be rotating. The most important thing when it comes to Miss Weaver cooldowns is to not overlap them. You cannot, and I need to repeat this: you can whether you're playing normal arena or solo shuffle, you cannot overlap these cooldowns with your own cooldowns or your teammates' cooldowns. It's it's really that simple. You will lose. <laughs> Like, it, it really is that simple. If there is one go where I need to use Restoral and Life Cocoon in the same go, I'm, it's it's over. Like, I, I got nothing for that. Uh, I got nothing, right? And then I would uh, just make sure you're always trying to space them out. Whenever you queue into an arena, shuffle, doesn't matter. Have a plan. You know, if there's a Fire Mage on the other team and, like, an Arms Warrior, just know what you're going to be rotating, right? So, you know, Combustion, you're going to play. You're going to press Restoral. You see Avatar, you're going to press Disarm. If you you've, if you're in trouble, or your teammates in trouble, press life cocoon. You know something like that, or maybe you're playing with the shaman, the astro, something. Just you cannot overlap cooldowns, or it's you just you don't have enough cooldowns to to like help you with that. Especially if the team is able to get CC on you too, you're just gonna fall behind and lose. Defensive cooldowns are the next thing I want to talk about. We actually have more defensive cooldowns than than cooldowns for our teammates. So. The first cooldown I want to talk about, let's see what we want to talk about first. Diffuse Magic. So this, I forgot to mention in the normal talents, but Diffuse Magic and Yulon's Grace are kind of interchangeable. I kind of like Yulon's Grace versus anything, you know, Magic, Caster, so, uh, like that. I like to use Diffuse Magic versus anything that's like um, Magic Dam, like Melee, like DK's Rets. Because I can line up my Diffuse Magic with their cooldowns. I like Yulon's Grace because versus Casters because it's just a shield I can have on me. They can't really swap to me, which is amazing. So those are kind of interchangeable. Diffuse Magic, though, can't be used while stunned. Gives you 60% damage reduction for 6 seconds. And actually, no, it's definitely nerfed in PvP. Yes, 40%. I was about to say, they just nerfed all our defenses in PvP. So it's 40% da magic damage reduction for 6 seconds. And you reverse anything, any dots in you back to the original caster. So for example, what I'll do a lot is versus Affliction Warlocks. I'll use Diffuse Magic when I have an unstable Affliction on me and it reverses that UA back to the Warlock and it does a decent amount of damage, which is nice. Um, it, actually, I'm not gonna lie, versus Affliction Warlocks, Yulon's Grace might also be good because you can dispel UA and you have the shield on you, which is nice, but 
that's besides the point. Diffuse magic. Use whenever you feel like teams are going to be swapping to you. Try to use it before stunned. Um, if you, as soon as you get out of stun, diffuse magic can also be handy. Um, if I'm ever playing against like DK Ret, you know, or Ret Demon Hunter, and teams are guarding me, what my first global will normally be diffuse magic, thunder focus to expel harm into like maybe a manatee instant velvet mist because you get that nice heal from expel harm. You also get the chi cocoon, and then you also get the instant velvet mist from the thunder focus T. So. Very, very good little little button to have. You also have Fort Brew. I meme about this a lot, and it's because it's really bad. But it's a six-minute cooldown. Let's let's just six-minute cooldown. You can make it a four-minute cooldown as well if you play um, Expedition Fortification. But in Solo Shuffle, you're, you're only using it once around anyway, right? So it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm just going to go with the Stronger Iron Shell Brew, which gives you more armor and dodge chance. So I'm just going to use it. And in a, a normal arena, you could probably get away with the four-minute four, four minute cooldown, but most teams don't really go you anyway, so I just go with the Stronger one. Um, so use this. Again, this lasts 15 seconds. So um, what I'll try to do is I'll try to use this if teams are going me and they're, they're going to try to stun me. Or if I'm trying to delay their go. So, like, if there's a rogue mage on me and I don't have port, let's just say, like, I, I use my port last go and, you know, the rogue mage is tunneling me down, I'll use Fort Brew because it lasts 15 seconds and there's a chance it just delays their go. Or they kidney shot into Fort Brew and for the most part, you'll live. You know, if you get a Thunder Focus T, expel harm, you get that shield and you get the damage reduction from Fort Brew and the health increase. It's actually, you should be able to stay alive with it. The next thing, it's not really defensive, but Ring of Peace really good for just literally anything this is an interrupt this is moving teammates out of position enemies out of position anything like that good spell really good for like making extending the pillar so you can just kind of ring around the rosy make the make it difficult for me they try to get to you just play the game try to figure out how you like to use ring a piece and use it it's a really really good spell uh, I'm trying to figure out any more defensives. Obviously, you have your port. This is probably the best defensive that you have, believe it or not, on the shortest cooldown, which is amazing. Don't forget with Escape from Reality, you get a second port, and then it increases the you know, the healing you do to yourself with Vivify and gives you mana back. So don't waste your port either. You know, Use it to avoid CC, but if you feel like teams are going to go you, try to save it, and then you can port twice, which is fantastic. Fantastic. I think there's one more defensive I'm forgetting, but I, oh, dampen harm. Yeah, of course. Dampen harm. So this reduces all damage you take by 20 to 50% for 10 seconds. So this is longer than the fuse magic, shorter than Fort Brew. This is good because it reduces the larger attacks on you by more. Really good versus, you know, Destro Locks, Arms Warriors, anything that's just super hard hitting, you know, full moons from from um balanced druids they're cranking for like 400k so stuff like that is really really good one little tip is that dampen harm you can use it while you're kicked so if you get kicked on soothing mist expel harm so if you're getting trained bait out a kick dampen harm it's really good if you could use it before it's done too it's very very nice and i think that's pretty much it for defensives uh, you know i talked about restore and all that use that while stunned and yeah those are your defensives try your best to not overlap them either because again you do have a few of them but there's a chance, you know, if you got none left, you're dead. I mean, that's, you know what I mean? You could die in a storm mode if you got nothing up. You got no port or anything. Next up, we have macros. And I'll, this part of the video, I'm going to try to, you know, try to take my time and try to talk about some macros I have for anyone that might be new to Mistweaver who might want them. I have macros for dash 13 and 14. This is pretty much so if I ever change my trinket, it'll just change on my bar. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's nothing else to it. It'll change on my bar. That's it. You don't need to drag your, your trinkets onto your bar after this. Just macro them, and you'll never have to change them again. This is a macro. This is just my mount macro. Arena 1, 2, 3. So, you know, everyone has, you know, their way of CCing. I like to use a one Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. That's just how my brain works. So I have in-cap 1, 2, 3. I also have disarm 1, 2, 3 somewhere. Oh, disarm 1, 2, 3 here with grapple weapon. So that just helps me a lot. Um, this macro makes it so you could swap Song of Chi Gi and Ring of Peace and not have to you know swap them on your bar either. I don't know if they've ever changed it. They probably did, but you know, you could use Ring of Peace and then you could spec into Song of Chi Gi and not have to worry about dragging it onto your bar. Stuff like that is pretty good. Drink macro. So this makes it so I cancel my Yulon because I feel like Yulon keeps me in combat when I you know when I'm trying to get out of combat, but I use mana, I use the mage drink, you know, whatever the mage food is, and then delicious dragon spittle as the drink. 
um, taunting. So I'll talk about this in the tips part of the video, but taunting pets is really, it's really become one of my favorite things to do in a while. I think there's a huge sky, uh, skill cap for it and I love it. So um, this is one of the taunt macros I'll talk about later. Um, invoke macro. So this is just a toy. When I Yulon, it makes things red. It makes my statue red with big red ray gun. 90% of PvP is just looking good while you do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, kick 1, 2, 3. This is a focus macro and then arena 1, 2, 3 for, or, yeah, arena 1, 2, 3 for kicking. Again, I just have that. This is a macro for leaving the arena. I actually get a lot of whispers because the dash clap. I don't know why. I've, I, I've had this macro forever. And I had, I've always had dash clap at the start. And I get whispered about, like, emoting. And I always forget why because I don't emote people. And then I, I realize it's because I have this macro, which... I don't know why I still have it there, but it's <laughs> it gets people mad. It's kind of funny. Uh, left cuckoo macro. I say this every single. I've been saying this in every video since I started making guides. Um, please use this macro. This is like the most important macro that you can have. Uh, this makes it so you can't accidentally life cocoon somebody that isn't there. Essentially, so you can't accidentally cocoon yourself when you when you know your target's mind controlled. You can, if you're doing RBGs, you can't life cocoon somebody that just died. Like there were a lot of times in RBGs where I'd be targeting somebody, oh they died. Let me press the life cocoon. Oh, I'll life cocoon myself. Like, you know what? And then you just waste life cocoon. So please use this macro. Please take this macro. It will it is amazing. And then I have a bunch of toys macroed into it. Don't you don't worry about the toys. Um, um if you're orc Blood Flurry, Blood Fury with Minity. It's pretty good. It's not, you know, not terrible, but um, this is actually from this is from Shaolin. So I can actually delete this. Poor Kevin. I used to have to cancel Kevin too. Uh, these are mass over macros for PVE. Party one, party two, party two dispel. Any, no matter what, you always want these macros. This will help you dispel things a lot quicker. Your DPS will love you. Then they'll probably hate you after you lose the round, but they'll love you <laughs> the brief second that you dispel them quickly. Um, pretty much it for macros. Oh, rising sun kick macros. So this is, this is like, this, this is really good. So this makes it so you can essentially not have to target anybody while you're fist weaving or if you're doing damage. So if you do damage to somebody and then you need to target a teammate, you could still rising sun kick or a tiger palm or a blackout kick. Like I could just target nothing and do damage. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, pretty good macro. I have that for rising sun kick, blackout kick and tiger palm. Um, statue is just a cursor macro, so I just add cursor. I don't just one less click, really. Um, Tiger's Lust, one, two, three. This is really important. Please, the, I think Tiger's Lust is very like underutilized. It is one of the best buttons that you can use for anyone, for yourself or your teammates. So this will get them out of root slows. Uh, it's very min maxi, but I would recommend it. This is party one, party two, and then for yourself. Todd, I tried so hard to make Todd work, but it actually just sucks. This one doesn't even work. Um, Todd just never wants to work. Uh, target, target, of uh, for Chi Wave, and for um for Chi Wave and Zen Spheres. So these are the two macros I use for target targets. What this does is this will use Chi Wave on the target of my target. So if my this guy is targeting the PVP dummy and I Chi Wave, this will hit the PVP dummy. This guy is also targeting the PVP dummy. I don't need to target the PVP dummy. I just put Zen Spheres on a dummy. So this is really good because this will put Chi Wave. This will use Chi Wave or Zen Sphere on whoever your teammates are targeting, which is fantastic. Because I don't, I don't want to put Zen Sphere on an enemy that no one's hitting. Because um, I want that ten, that ten percent damage done uh, bonus to them. So, very, very good macro to have. <laughs> tyrannical. I do have a Tiger's Less Tyrannical, or sorry, Tyrant macro, um, because that little guy is slow. It's for Demo. I play with a lot of Demo locks, pretty much. So that's why I have that. Um, no, this one I can actually delete this macro. This is from BFA. I don't know why I still have this macro. Disarm one, two, three. Um, and then yeah, those are those are my macros. Oh, and then this one people like. I don't really like it that much, but this is a world marker. Um, you need to be the you need to be the leader of your group, but this will put a world marker at your location um, when you transcendence. So. If you have a hard time, you know, if you're new to Mistweaver, you have a hard time tracking where your report is, you just put a marker down, a big world marker down, and then it'll show you where it is. But I don't really use them. Um, just try to keep track of it, and you should be fine. Add-ons. So I'm not going to go through all my add-ons. I have a whole video going over them. But the main ones you're going to want to use are Diminish is probably the big one. So Easy Frames is just my UI. But 
um, Gladius X. So Gladius X is really sick now. I downloaded it because I got tired of Omnibar. And this is what I do with Gladius X. I don't use anything except for this right here. I track interrupts with Gladius X because Omnibar was destroying my frames, destroying my action bar, even though I swapped to Blizzard frames or Blizzard action bar. I got so annoyed. I looked for anything and it actually works really, really well. So Gladius X, really good for just tracking interrupts. Um, and then, yeah, there's really nothing really else to it. Frame sort puts me on the bottom of groups. Mm, nothing really else. Nameplate cooldowns, nameplate auras. This is what shows like you know, CC above targets right here. And then the cooldowns I used um, on the CD tracks my teammates cooldowns. And then, yeah, I think S Arena, the PvP scripts on my own scripts. If anyone's interested in my own scripts, you can, I can upload them. But right now they're just local on my computer. I, I don't think people are going to want my scripts. I kind of have my own, I have my own UI that I don't think many people would like. Like I, I have, at the start of the video, I have numbers. Like I don't have, I don't like floating combat text. I think it, it's distracting. So I don't think many people, many people want to use them. And then S Arena is the big one that shows like that's the arena frame, right? This is, it's like the main uh, arena frame. So, um, and then obviously weak auras. I make a lot of my own weak auras. I would say 90, 95% of the weak auras you see on the screen here, I made myself. There's just some PVE ones that I copied because I'm too lazy. But as far as PVE goes, yes, I do make all of these weak auras. If you need a weak aura, let me know. If you want to know any of my weak auras, they're in the description. I am, you don't have to pay for them. They're free. It's all yours. You don't, I'm, you know, I'm not going to gatekeep weak auras. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. I'm more than happy to go over them, make one for you, anything like that. They're all yours. And now we've gotten to the tips and tricks part of the video. I'm going to do my best to just go over whatever kind of comes to my mind. There's really, I, this part of the video really isn't structured. I'm just going to try to rapid fire as many things as I can. The first tip I would give you is to please macro taunt and put it on your bar. Taunt or provoke is the one of the best ways you can break CC. It has a pretty high skill cap when it comes to timing it, but if you could use, uh, there's also another macro I use. This is a more generic macro I would recommend over the other one. Um, this one will taunt Arena 1, 2, 3. This will break CC on you. It will literally break CC on you. I have had games where I taunted so many hunter pet, hunter traps from their pets that they swapped to Diamond Ice because they didn't want their traps getting broken, it, which is insane. I, I couldn't even believe that shovel game. Um, so please, you use it. Use that macro. Try to taunt. It's an eight second cooldown. Use it off cooldown and try to get a trap you know, or, uh, you know, a poly. You can talk water alley for poly. Anything. Try to just try to break any CC with it. The second thing is your, your port. So, you know, you have two ports with escape from reality, right? Now, I don't know if this is a bug. It might be, but it's been in the game since Shadowlands, so I use it. If you use a port and you have escape from reality buff and you get kicked, let's just say you get kicked while you have it up, you could use your second port to get away okay now you didn't hear it from me and i definitely haven't been using it for the next for the past few years <laughs> but when they patch i'm gonna be sad but until that day you could use your second port from escape from reality while you're kicked speaking of getting kicked you could use dampen harm while you're kicked okay so if you're getting trained i will sometimes like if i'm at like 100 percent health and I have Dampen Harm, and I see I'm starting to get off Sunday R, and they're going to want to, I see Stormbolt or Kidney Shot, I'll try to get kicked, and then I'll Dampen Harm. And then normally they'll like Stormbolt into it or Kenny into it, and then normally you're fine, which is great, because after the lockout, maybe you could port and all that, which is great. Next tip I would recommend is your common coalescent stacks. So in Shuffle, this happens more in normal arena than Shuffle, because most of the time in Shuffle, people just like go straight in, but it doesn't happen every time. Soothing, every time you Soothing Mist, the absorber of your next life cocoon is increased by 2%. This counts your soothe, your Jade Serpent statue Soothing Mist. So you're, here, can I just cancel the stacks? All right. So without my statue, I'm going up one stack at a time, right? One stack, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Put my statue down and I start channeling Soothing Mist. It's going to go up two, four, six, eight, ten. So if there's a team normal arena shuffle doesn't matter that's like the arena just starts and they're just hiding behind a pillar they're like they don't know the strat they want to do please take advantage of that time to get a 50 stack life cocoon all right so 
I would what normally what I do. And then also another trick with soothing mist. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but try to put two set or try to put renewing mist and then also try to put soothing mist on whoever you think they're going to go. That way your teammate gets the bonus healing from your soothing mist. Um, anyway, so try to get the 50 stacks. Try to get the 50 stacks as soon as you can. Um, just by channeling on whoever you think they're going to go, which is really nice. Um, that way, when you need to use life cocoon, your first life cocoon in a shuffle or you know an arena, you have a big life cocoon. Because there's sometimes where teams will zer just you know zerg in, and you know your life cocoon, and it's only what, what's the absorption on this? It's only nine hundred thirty, only nine hundred thirty-five k. But that's actually not big because of dampening, um, rather than what one one point eight million. So if a team chills behind a pillar, let them quickly get your stacks of comic core lessons from your statue and yourself and that way that first live cocoon they really can't go through it the next tip is probably the most important tip on this list and that is the interaction between escape from reality and eminence so escape from reality makes it so you can pour it two times which is fantastic the eminence talent allows you to use transcendence while stunned and if you don't use transcendence while stunned it reduces the cooldown by 15 seconds. Now, it is a, there's weird interactions. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but the first one is if you use your second port when you're not stunned, it makes the cooldown of your transcendence 30 seconds. So that means if you port while stunned the first time and then your second port you use outside of a stun, it will reduce the cooldown as if you never ported while stunned, if that makes sense. So if I port right now and then I port again, the cooldown on my transcendence will be 30 seconds, which is what you want. If you, you use one port and then you just never use your escape from reality, the cooldown is going to be 35 seconds. And if you port the first time outside of a stun and then your second port is during a stun, you'll have a 45 second transcendence. Pretty much what this means is focus on your second port. Always, always, always port a second time when you're out of a stun. That means if you're, you know, in the middle of the map and you get kidney shot and you need to port, but you're stunned, port while you're stunned, which is fine, but make sure if they chase you, you always port when you're outside of a stun for your second port. That way you get the 30 second cooldown on your transcendence transfer, rather than 35 seconds if you don't use escape from reality, or 45 seconds if you use it while you're stunned. A passive that Mistweavers have that I didn't really talk about is Mystic Touch. And that's because we don't really play with melee these days because it's kind of hard to heal double melee. But you will be, obviously, in shuffle, you will be paired with melee DPS. And what this does is whenever you do damage to somebody, they will get a debuff called Mystic Touch where they will take 5%, not 15, 5% increased physical damage. So if you're playing with a Warrior, Feral Druid, even a Demo Lock because a lot of their pets are melee, you want to try to maintain Mystic Touch. It is not a permanent debuff either. I think it lasts 15 seconds. I think it's a Monk passive. Um, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's 15 seconds and you want to keep refreshing it. Yeah, it's 15 seconds. And Spinning Crane Kick, you know, Chi Wave is pretty good. Um, Cracking the Jade Lightning. Anything like that. Really, really important for getting that, that, um, that pass about so just try to be as min max as you can because every little bit matters in solo shuffle when it comes to getting silenced kicked anything like that do not panic because there's a lot of buttons that you can use to peel for yourself your teammate stop cc anything so a good example is when your root beams from a boomy sure you could just spin around in a circle when you're root beamed but you can actually do stuff the biggest thing is you can in-cap and you can leg sweep. So if the boomy is close enough to you, which sometimes they are, sometimes they come out of stealth and like they're like right on top of you, you can in-cap them when they're trying to cyclone you and then you can sweep them if they're close enough. You could also shadow meld if you're night elf. So that should get you out of any follow-up CC. Um, now, if you're silenced or anything like that, and there's other, you could also disarm. So if you're playing against a boomy warrior, you know, uh, Shadow Priest Warrior, you know, anything Shadow Priest, melee, boomy melee, you could also disarm the melee. So what you'll see me do when I'm root beamed and I'm like not on my gnome is I'll, first of all, I'll try to look for anything I can in-cap. I'll try to in-cap a DPS that we're not hitting. If that's not an option, I will try to disarm the melee DPS. Um, this will, that way this, you slow that, you slow their damage and you can, you can stop any follow-up CC on you. If you want to make Death Knights hate you, the first thing you're going to want to do is to put your statue down and hold your globals. Get your hots out when you can. But what the Death Knight go it looks like is they're going to try to hit somebody, try to hit this guy right here. And they're going to try to grip the healer, which is you, into them. Don't let that happen. Put your hots out. Try to stay far away. When you get gripped, you could port mid-grip, 
reset your port and when they do use their second grip you can port again this will infuriate many death knights because you completely negate their go because instead of having a cleave go they have a single target go and it makes it a lot easier for you to heal it if you're ever in a situation where you need to dispel a an affliction warlock's dots which i've seen a few of them but i haven't seen many of them you could use zen focus t to immune the silence which is kind of nice so what you'll see me do sometimes obviously depending on the situation but i'll zen focus t diffuse magic myself so i'm not silenced i'll probably use like a thunder focus uh, expel harm and then i'll dispel somebody else's if, if i have to you can dispel theirs and you don't get silenced for any of that you take the damage but you won't get silenced revival can be used while you're drinking and won't put you in combat so a little trick especially since this season where you're going to be going for drinks quite often in normal arena what you could do is you can port right shadow meld start drinking revival doesn't put you in combat so you could revival if your team gets low and then go back to drinking and you're fine so I've used this so many times, so many times in arena where teammates, like the enemy team thinks I like I'm back in combat because they see revival, but I'm actually not because it doesn't put me in combat. I mentioned it earlier, but disarm can do two really important things versus hunters and warriors. The first thing is our grapple weapon does not count as a melee disarm. So when a warrior parries, normally what they'll do is they'll try to parry the same time they're using burst cooldowns is sometimes and they'll try to immune disarm from like rogues and other warriors they cannot do that for grapple weapon your grapple weapon does not work like that so if you see a parry coming out from warrior and they also have it like using you know avatar at the same time you still disarm it which is fantastic with hunters they cannot kick if they are disarmed so if you're coming into a bm hunter or a marks hunter and you're playing you know grapple weapon for let's just say true shot or something and they press true shot even if they don't have it and you need to get some healing out, you could disarm them and then free cast because they can't kick you. The final tip is how to deal with Salty Rogue Shadowy Duel. Now, for those of you who don't know, Shadowy Duel makes it so they take, it's just the rogue and their target. But AoE spells work in Shadowy Duel for targets that aren't inside of it. So what that means is you could use spells like Revival. Ch the Chi Cocoon from Yulon counts as an AoE spell. So you could use Restoral, and you could also use Rop and Leg Sweep. So when you see a Rogue use their Shadowy Duel, you'll see it a lot in Solo Shuffle. They're going to try to get a Trinket so they can Smoke Bomb the next go, or they try to Smoke Bomb, get a Trinket so they can Shadowy Duel. If you see the Shadowy Duel come out, just know, just find your teammate. You know, obviously, try to get out of CC. Find your teammate. Normally, the first thing I'll do is I'll press Revival if I have it, because that it goes through shadow duel obviously and it makes them immune to magic to magical damage and then i'll try to sweep or leg sweep if i if i'll try to sweep or ring a piece on top of my teammate depending on where they are if i'm if they're too far away from me at the time i will just ring a piece on top of them and if i'm close enough to them i will sweep on top of them and that is normally enough to be able to get them out of cc and then i can maybe like throw a renewing mist you know and use like a thunder focus team velvet mist on them just to get some quick healing out once they come out of duel but Keep that in mind, AoE spells go through Shadowy Duel. You can use Revival to immune the hunt damage and dot. So I don't know if this is known or I don't see it used too often, but whenever you see the hunt being casted by the Demon Hunter, if you press Restore while they're midair, it will completely negate their cooldown. And it's really, really good because most of the time it'll line up with the hunt. Try to use your Restore to immune that hunt damage and dot, and that will completely negate a lot of their burst damage. Finally, positioning with the Warlock, it actually just so happens that there's a Warlock right here. I find a lot of people struggle because their Warlocks always die, and they, I've seen it in Monk Mondays and in Shuffles. The most important thing you can do when you're playing with a Warlock, and he takes his port away, is to play on their port. So what I'll do is I'll put my port on my Warlock's port, and then let's just say, for example, this is the Warlock port. You want to position here. You always want to position between the Warlock and, your port, and their port, always. That way, when they port, you're still able to cast and it doesn't cancel your soothing mist which means it doesn't cancel your soothing mist acts so keep that in mind always try to get the mentality of staying positioning between the warlock and their port and my last tip for mistweavers and for pvp in general is to just have fun and enjoy it the most important part about playing video games is to enjoy it mistweaver is hands down don't let anyone tell you differently the most fun spec in the game whether we're good or bad I will be playing it. A lot of other people might be playing it, 
but I will always be playing it. It is so fun to play. Try to find people you enjoy playing with and you will be PvPing a lot more. Trust me, I've tried to play with people that I, di I did not enjoy playing with and I didn't even want to log on. But if you find people you genuinely enjoy playing with or you find a game mode that you enjoy doing, stick with it and you will quickly learn Mistweavers and PvP. And that is all I got. That is it for the Mistweaver guide. I don't know how long this video is, but I normally try my best to... This is the only type of video I try to ramble on. The other types of videos, I try to just get it, you know... I try to get to the point as much as I can, but... Uh, for this this video I do try my best to just try to talk and you know give people um, any you know tips tricks anything like that and if if there's any tips or tricks you know that I don't please I would love to know so that is it for me hope everyone has a fantastic day hope we enjoy the guide and I'll see you later.